What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be going over 25 things that you need to know about the Skydio 2. Now, a lot of the things that I go over in this video, in my opinion, are very important to know, but they didn't really deserve their own video topic, as there's not a whole lot to talk about behind these different points that I go over. Also, I do just want to mention that some of the issues I bring up in this video that make up the 25 things you should know about the Skydio 2 could be potentially fixed in the future through a firmware or software update, so we'll get into that uh, as we kind of go down the list but let's start off with the first one we'll get right into things here you should know that the skydio does not come with a remote controller in its base form so if you order the skydio 2 it doesn't come with the beacon or with the remote controller you're just expected to fly this drone using your ipad or using your mobile device like your smartphone and flying a drone using like the smartphone screen really just isn't all that good so if you want the best control over the skydio 2 whether you plan on using it for tracking purposes or manual flight you definitely want to look at buying the remote controller or the beacon separately, both of which cost an extra $150 each. The second thing to note about the Skydio 2 is that when you want to charge the battery for this drone, it needs to be done through the USB-C port on the drone itself. So you need to charge the battery through the drone. Now you can purchase the separate battery hub accessory to charge two at once, but if you don't buy that add-on accessory, it needs to be done through that port on the drone itself. And when you begin charging, for whatever reason, Skydio thought this would be a great idea they actually have the drone turn on. So the lights turn on, the gimbal is on when the battery is charging. And the reason I bring this up is because you want to make sure you remove the gimbal guard when you charge this drone up. And you also want to make sure that you don't have it inside of a case or inside of a bag because the gimbal is on and the motors are engaged, making sure the camera is steady, even though you've just got the drone sitting there charging. So make sure that when you charge this drone, the gimbal guard is off and it's not inside of a case or inside of a bag. Make sure it's on a nice level surface. Now this brings us into the third thing to know about the Skydio 2, and that's what I'm calling phantom charging. So I've experienced this when I charge up a full battery with the Skydio 2 plugged into the drone, of course, and I take off a battery and simply put the next one on, it doesn't actually charge that battery. So the process I've gone through is to take out the battery, unplug the drone, put on the new battery I want to charge and then plug the drone back inside and then you're going to be good from there. That's actually happened to me before where I wasn't able to fly a second battery because it was dead. The fourth thing to know when flying the Skydio 2, specifically with the remote controller, is that you want to make sure that the Wi-Fi is turned off on your phone. And this is for two specific reasons. First of all, it's going to give a much better signal to the remote controller. It's not competing with the Wi-Fi on your phone. And also so that it doesn't accidentally connect to the drone's Wi-Fi. And then it kind of gets confused like, wait, do you want to fly with the remote controller or do you want to fly with the phone? So just turn off Wi-Fi when flying with the remote controller. It's going to give you a much better experience. Now, the fifth thing that you need to know about the Skydio 2 is that you can connect your mobile device to the Beacon's Wi-Fi network in order to get an overall better experience when having the Skydio 2 track you. Now, I understand if you're doing some sort of action sport that requires two hands, it might be a little bit tough to hold both the Beacon and the phone. But if you do end up using that companion application along with the beacon accessory, you're going to get so much more flexibility and a lot more information shown to you at the time of flying your drone. Moving on to the sixth thing that you need to know about the Skydio 2, this is probably one of the worst issues I've run into with this drone thus far. Specifically, when flying manually using the remote controller, it is just all over the place. Now, I understand that it uses the sensors to stay away from certain objects, so if you fly close to something, it is going to move out of the way on its own and it won't really go exactly where you want it to but especially when you have it out in the open and let's say you begin decreasing the altitude and you stop the drone continues to go down so the latency really isn't all that great and then it pops back up and you'll see from this very horrible clip that I recorded just before I started shooting this video, the drone continues to bob up and down. So the sixth thing you need to know about the Skydio 2 is that it's not a very precise flyer. I should probably add a caveat to that statement that I just made. This drone, the Skydio 2, is very precise when it's flying through very tight areas and it's trying to track a subject. As you guys saw through some of my videos, it does a very good job at that. But when you're flying it manually, it just feels like it's all over the place. Now moving into the seventh thing you need to know about the Skydio 2 is that there are in fact ND filters made for this drone. The specific brand that I have is Freewell and the cool thing about them is that they attach with magnets. There's no need to have to screw anything in. You don't have to take a lens on or off. They just snap right on the front and it's very satisfying to feel. Now this specific set here has got an ND4, ND8, and an ND16. 
There's also a CPL as well as an ND8, 16, 32, and 64 polarizer. And it all comes in this nice little case with a clear top. So these are made by Freewell. They're really great. The Skydio has no issue booting up whatsoever. The gimbal still calibrates with the added weight on the front. And that added magnet just makes the experience of using an ND filter so much easier. Now, the eighth thing that you guys need to know about the Skydio 2 is that it is a great video drone. Photos, not so much. I'm not that impressed with the files. And I know that I'm sort of contradicting myself here because I just was talking about how it's not all that precise when you fly it, but at least the video files that come out on the other end look great. Now, this thing shoots 4K video at 60 frames per second. This sort of bleeds into the ninth thing to know about the Skydio 2, but it also has some phenomenal colors. Across the board, this drone takes great video. I've flown it manually, gotten some great shots of like the Ben Franklin Bridge, and I also went down to the Art Museum in Philadelphia. Also, I've had this drone track me, and in a lot of the different lighting situations I've put it in, it seemed to handle very well. Now, getting into the tenth thing to know about the Skydio 2, we're kind of staying on the same realm of shooting video. The HDR video is an absolute waste. Now, you guys are looking at a side-by-side -side comparison, one video shot with HDR turned on, one video shot with with HDR turned off and at the end of the day they're just boosting the shadows across the board and I feel like the HDR shot also has a blue tint of course you guys can see that the shadows are lifted but at the end of the day I'd rather just shoot it without HDR turned on and then from there try and figure out a way to make the shadows look better and adjust the exposure myself as when you use HDR video and when that's turned on you don't have any control over the camera's settings now as you guys might be able to imagine shooting 4k video at 60 frames per second with a bitrate of 100 megabits per second is going to potentially chew up a lot of room on your SD card. So the 11th thing to know about the Skydio 2 is that you're going to want to use a large SD card. Now, this is the case for a lot of other drones. I tend to say don't use anything less than like 32 gigs, but it is specifically true for the Skydio 2 because it's got a function called auto record. So as soon as you take the drone off, it begins recording. Now, if you fly for 18, 19, 20 minutes and you land with a video file that is that long, the full length of the flight, you can imagine that it is going to take up a ton of space on the SD card. Now, the reason auto record is such an important feature on the Skydio 2 is because if you're going to be flying with like the beacon and you take Take off. You don't have anywhere to hit record, so you know that the drone is always recording. But even if you go and select to do manual recording, even when you restart this drone, it's going to automatically put you back into auto record, which I guess is okay because I'd rather not potentially miss a shot. But just make sure you've got a large SD card in here to handle all the video that you're going to be shooting. So the Skydio 2 was entirely built around autonomy, and it's probably one of the greatest autonomous drones that we've ever seen on the consumer market market. So what I want to do is go over some things that you guys need to know about this drone, about the Skydio 2, when you're using it to track a subject. The 12th thing to know about the Skydio 2 is that it is incredibly good at flying by itself. It knows exactly what to do in a lot of the different situations that you put it in and time in and time out when I use the Skydio 2 and have it track me no matter what area I'm in, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm in a car, I'm riding on my boosted board, or I'm walking, this drone continues to to amaze and impress me. The things that I throw at it, the things that I see it do just don't seem like it's real. Like I can't believe a drone is actually able to do this and fly on its own. So I just had to include it in here. The 12th thing to know is that this drone is incredibly good at flying by itself. So onto the 13th thing to know about the Skydio 2, what makes it so good at flying by itself? What makes it so good at tracking a subject? Well, there's a lot of things that factor into it. For example, you've got six cameras on here, all of which are wide angle, they've got an f1.8 aperture and they all see, they don't really record, they see in 4K, but also if you purchase the beacon accessory, then you've got a blend of GPS tracking and also that camera algorithm tracking that we see with motion track. So if you've got the beacon on you, the drone always knows where you're at with the GPS signal, but also it's going to constantly analyze the frame to make sure it's tracking the proper subject. So a good thing to know about motion track if you have the beacon is that it uses a blend of GPS as well as motion track and camera tracking software to make sure that it always follows the subject that you want it to follow. Now, staying in the category of tracking, the 14th thing that you guys need to know about the Skydio 2 is a feature called height floor. Now, when height floor is turned on, the drone will not fly below eight feet in order 
here to track a subject. So let's say you come up to a tree, the drone will not go underneath of that tree. And the reason this is even put into place is to make sure the drone doesn't collide with other bystanders that might be around you while you're flying this drone. So it is a safety feature. But if you turn this off, then the tracking experience will improve exponentially. So it'll fly underneath the trees and underneath of objects to make sure that it keeps up with its subject. But just make sure you use this in the areas where it's appropriate to. Now, moving on to the 15th thing to know about the Skydio 2, of course, the way that this drone sees, as I mentioned, is the six cameras positioned all the way around this drone. And you want to make sure that you keep them clean. So the 15th thing to know is to make sure that all of these cameras are clean using the included microfiber cloth, because if the drone has any smudges, any cracks or any, um, I guess, debris covering those cameras, then it's not going to be able to fly properly. Now, I don't mean to continue to talk about the obstacle avoidance cameras on this drone, but they really are a core foundation of how this drone flies. So not only do you want to keep them clean, but the 16th thing that you guys should know about the Skydio 2 is that it has these little nubs next to each of the cameras. So if it crashes and hits the ground, it could potentially protect the lens. And also, if you just put the drone on a table, it's not going to scratch those lenses up. So if I took this drone with those lenses up top and put it face down, it's going to sit on those nubs rather than sit on the actual camera lenses itself, that obviously would not be too good. Now, as you guys have seen in some of my previous tracking videos, the Skydio 2 is not perfect. Sometimes it gets stuck and it doesn't know what to do. So the 17th thing that you guys need to know about the Skydio 2 is when it does get stuck, you can use, as I keep reaching over there, the beacon accessory to manually fly this drone. So you can enter steering mode where you use the tiny little buttons to spin the drone around and fly it towards you, or you can actually hold down the Skydio button and wave their beacon around like it's a wand to put the drone in the exact area where you want it to. But if it gets stuck and you need to precisely move the drone out of the area that it's stuck in, you probably want to use that steering mode. Now, this brings us into the 18th thing to know about the Skydio 2, and that is when you are flying this drone and you have it flying autonomously tracking you, you want to put it in an area where it's going to succeed. I preach this in almost all of my Skydio 2 videos. Flying it autonomously is a skill. You can't just expect to put this drone up in the air and have it magically follow you and dodge every single obstacle. If you go and you try and put it over an area where there's a ton of trees, chances are it's going to get hung up or it's going to fail at tracking you and even potentially crash. But if you put it in an area where it's going to succeed, if you put it in the best angle where it's going to have the best chance at dodging obstacles, that is going to be how you get the best tracking experience possible. Now, I sort of alluded to the 19th thing that you guys need to know about the Skydio 2, and that is when this drone crashes because it does crash. Crash. Don't worry, the video that you're recording still saves, but like the previous or the prior 15 seconds seems to delete. So it seems to be put in some sort of buffer. It stores a lot of it to the actual SD card itself, but like the 15 seconds prior to a crash, it usually just kind of deletes that footage. And the reason behind that is because almost every single time I've crashed this drone, which has been like two or three times, the battery pops out because it's magnetic. So any sort of force the battery just pops out, which is not really a good thing, but that ultimately leads to the drone losing power and the video stops recording. But don't worry, most of that video will still save to the SD card. Moving on here to the 20th thing that you need to know about the Skydio 2, it's the fact that within the application, you can heavily change and alter the flight settings of this drone to really make it fly exactly how you want it to fly. So you can change like the pitch, the yaw, the roll, and the throttle between zero and 100% to figure out exactly how sensitive you want this drone to fly. And this brings us into the 21st thing to know. If you guys want a little bit more speed out of the Skydio 2, you can hold the back left bumper button. It's sort of marked by like a crosshair as this will give you a little boost in speed and it's actually a pretty significant boost in speed so if you don't have all of those settings dialed all the way up you can access that top speed by holding that crosshair button on the back when flying manually all right so we've got four more things to go over that make up our list of things to know about the skydio 2 and i have a feeling that this video is already longer than i expected because i've wasted so much time just sitting here talking so let's try to hit these in a little bit of a quicker fashion so number 
22, the 20 second thing to know about the Skydio 2 is that you cannot turn off the obstacle avoidance sensors. The reason I'm upset about this is because I like to turn those off so that I can do some more precise flying in tight areas, but this drone at the end of the day has the ultimate say in where it does and where it doesn't fly because of what the sensors pick up. Now the 23rd thing to know about this drone piggybacks off of the sensors not turning off and it's the fact that you can't fly in low light situations or I should say in the dark if the sun is setting you can still fly this drone but when it gets dark outside because the sensors can't see the drone won't fly. Now the 24th thing to know about the Skydio 2 is that the return home function really isn't all that trustworthy and it doesn't have a lot of the robust features you'd expect out of a drone like what DJI offers, right? They have a lot of really great return home functions, a lot of great fail safes built in, but the return home on this uh, drone feels a little bit shaky and you guys can see why in the video I uploaded with my first remote controller flight because I had a little bit of a heart attack. Now coming in here, the 25th thing to know about this drone, this kind of piggyback off of what I just said about return to home not being that trustworthy, the app doesn't have a lot of features. It doesn't display a lot of information. I could honestly list so many things that are missing, important battery statistics. Uh, also, you can't see like the gimbal pitch angle. You can't see a lot of things in this application. I could be here forever listing them and I really hope that they begin to give us even more to look at in that application because as of right now, there's not a lot to look at. So guys, there we have it. 25 things to know about the Skydio 2. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Hopefully it helps you out with this drone if you decided to purchase it. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.